Hello everyone, I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I am working as consultant nephrologist and kidney transplant specialist at Pace Hospitals High Tech City in Hyderabad. Today I will be speaking about an important kidney related problem which is called as interstitial nephritis. So to understand the term interstitial nephritis, we need to know about the structure of the kidney. So each kidney, we have two kidneys in our body and each kidney has small units called as nephrons. So there are two parts of nephron. One is a globular structure which is called as glomerulus and there is a tube which is connecting to that globular structure which is called as a tubule. So each kidney has 10 lakh such units and they are closely packed. The space between these units is called as the interstitium. The space between all of these units inside the kidney is the interstitium. So, interstitial nephritis is a condition where this interstitium is affected due to our immune system. So, what happens in this condition is there is something called as inflammation. Inflammation is a situation or a terminology which we use when our body's immune system tries to defend our body by removing some harmful things from the body like infections or some foreign antigens. So, in this condition in interstitial nephritis, inflammation is developed in the interstitium. So, because of that, the interstitium of the kidney gets damaged and it will lead to, it will lead to kidney function reduction. So, this can present like decreased urine output or any other symptoms which I will be explaining further. So, this is about the term interstitial nephritis. So, there are two types of interstitial nephritis. One is acute interstitial nephritis. The second one is the chronic interstitial nephritis. In these two conditions, the mechanism is same, but the difference is only the duration. If the interstitial nephritis or the kidney damage due to the drugs or the allergic reaction which is happening inside the kidney is for short duration, this is called as acute interstitial nephritis. And the distinction is important because acute interstitial nephritis is predominantly reversible. If the damage is for prolonged duration, which is called as chronic interstitial nephritis for many weeks to months, this will lead to irreversible permanent damage inside the kidney, which will lead to permanent loss of kidney function. So, acute and chronic interstitial nephritis distinction is important to know the reversibility of the kidney damage and also to tell the prognosis to the patient. As I have already mentioned, it is the inflammation which is happening in the interstitium of the kidney and inflammation is a part of the immune system. So, we have immune system in our body which will try to defend our body from foreign organisms like bacteria, virus, parasites or some foreign antigens or dust or any other thing which is foreign to our body which is not self like something coming from outside. If we are getting exposed to that outside thing, our body will try to defend our body and it will try to remove that foreign exposure. So, here the causes of interstitial nephritis can be divided into two, three categories. The first one is the antibiotics or the medications. The second one is the infections. Third one is the autoimmune conditions and fourth one is usually sometimes we do not know a specific cause. If we take the medications as cause, the most important thing are the painkillers. The painkillers which are used in day to day life like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like acyclofenac, diclofenac or uh, ibuprofen. These are available over the counters, over the counter in the medical shops. These drugs can lead to interstitial nephritis. The other important medications which can cause interstitial nephritis are the gas related tablets or the antacid tablets which are commonly used like pantoprazole, lansoprazole or omeprazole, they can also cause the interstitial nephritis. The third one is the antibiotics. Antibiotics, penicillin group of drugs are more, co more commonly associated with the interstitial nephritis. So, this is about the medications which are commonly used in day-to-day -day life which can lead to interstitial nephritis. Coming to the other category, the second important cause of interstitial nephritis is the infections. Any bacterial or parasitic or viral infections can lead to 
interstitial nephritis. The third important category is the autoimmune conditions. Autoimmune means auto is self and immune is the related to immunity. So, here our immunity which is self to us is acting against us. So, it is the autoimmunity. So, our immune system it will if it damages our own body it is called as autoimmune condition. So, there are few conditions like lupus, systemic lupus erythematosus and many other autoimmune conditions where our body can lead to interstitial or this our body immunity will lead to interstitial nephritis. Other than these causes sometimes there won't be any exposure or cause where the condition is called as idiopathic without any identifiable cause. So, here with exposure to these drugs or infections or in the autoimmune conditions what will happen is because of this drugs or infections there will be something called as antigen which is exposed to our immune system. Our immune system will identify this antigen and it will try to damage it or remove it in a, from our body because of which we will develop inflammation in the interstitium of the kidney leading to interstitial nephritis. Clinical features if we take as I have already said about the interstitial nephritis definition, the interstitium of the kidneys get damaged because of that the kidney function will decrease. So, majority of the patients with interstitial nephritis usually will not have any symptoms, but if at all they develop any symptoms, they can present like decreased urine output or swelling of the feet or weakness or decreased appetite or sometimes they can develop fever with rash all over the body. So, these are the common clinical features of interstitial nephritis. But the most important thing which you need to know is majority of the patients will not have any symptoms with interstitial nephritis. So, as I have already said why do these symptoms develop? Because the tubules and the glomerulus they are all closely packed in the kidney and they are working on their own and the interstitium is joining them all together. So, if the thing which is joining them together is damaged, the function of the tubules or the nephrons is affected because of which the kidneys will not work properly and it will lead to kidney function decline. As I have already mentioned, majority of the patients with interstitial nephritis do not have any symptoms. Sometimes if they develop symptoms, they can have fever or rash or swelling of the body or swelling of the feet, less urine output or weakness, decreased appetite. So, these are the common symptoms. Sometimes if the patient develops these symptoms, we need to visit the doctor and once we visit the doctor, the, uh, the tests which are done to identify the kidney problem are the urine tests and the blood tests. As I have already mentioned, majority of the patients will not develop any symptoms. In those cases also, routine blood tests like urine test or blood test will lead to diagnosis of this condition. So, in the blood test, we measure something called as serum creatinine which is a kidney function marker. If there is interstitial nephritis, the creatinine value will increase in the blood. And the urine examination which we do to check for the kidney function will also show abnormalities in the form of some protein loss or there will be abnormal presence of some white blood cells or the red blood cells which are usually present in the blood, they will be leaking into the urine. So, the doctor or the nephrologist who assesses the patient will take the history of the patient and will try to identify whether the patient has any exposure to these drugs or infections or if there is any history of autoimmune condition and will try to come to the diagnosis of interstitial nephritis. So, sometimes kidney biopsy may be required to identify the or confirm the diagnosis of interstitial nephritis. In the kidney biopsy, a small piece of kidney is removed from the kidney and it is tested under microscope or examined under microscope to look for the inflammation which I have already mentioned, the inflammation changes in the interstitium to confirm the diagnosis. So, this is about the diagnosis of interstitial nephritis where along with the laboratory parameters, the exposure of the drugs or the infection and along with that sometimes a kidney biopsy is required to confirm the diagnosis. The first and the foremost thing as I have already mentioned 
this is an allergic reaction predominantly to the drugs or it can be due to infection or autoimmune condition so we need to identify whether the whether there is any exposure to the drugs which can cause interstitial nephritis like the painkillers or the antacids or the antibiotic use if at all there is any use in the recent few weeks or in the recent few days we need to identify if at all there is any such exposure and the diagnosis fits into interstitial nephritis the first and the foremost step in the treatment is to stop that drug in majority of the patients stopping of the drug alone is important and it is enough to recover the kidney function and sometimes if we identify the infection which is causing interstitial nephritis treatment of interstitial infection will lead to recovery of the kidney function and the other conditions like autoimmune conditions treatment of those conditions will lead to recovery of the kidney function sometimes even with stopping of the drugs or with the treatment inf uh, treatment of the infection kidney function may not recover in such cases if the kidney function is severely affected in such cases steroids are given steroids are something uh, which affects the immune system these are the medications which are anti inflammatory as i have already mentioned inflammation happens in the interstitium which will leads to kidney damage but the steroids they reverse this inflammation they are the anti inflammatory drugs which will decrease the immune immunity of our body which will lead to recovery of the kidney function so steroids are given for few weeks to months and which will lead to recovery of the kidney function so this is about the treatment of interstitial nephritis but if the patient has chronic interstitial nephritis if the biopsy shows permanent damage in the kidneys with permanent loss of kidney tubules this steroid use is not a beneficial in such cases because the kidney is already permanently damaged and there will be no benefit from the steroid use as i have already mentioned the prognosis depends upon the acute interstitial nephritis or chronic interstitial nephritis and also on identification of the cause of the interstitial nephritis if the patient has acute interstitial nephritis and if we have identified a drug or specific condition which is leading to interstitial nephritis treating of those condition or stopping the drug and giving the steroids can lead to full recovery of the kidney function and if the kidney damage is permanent and if we don't have any specific cause of the interstitial nephritis like if we don't have a cause we don't know what we are going to treat in such cases steroids are tried in few cases but the recovery is not guaranteed if the permanent damage happens in the kidney and if it is confirmed by kidney biopsy the kidney function may not recover and ultimately patient may land up in kidney failure so the first and the foremost thing is to restrict or avoid using over the counter medications or indiscriminate use of medications at our own will whenever we develop any gastritis symptoms or a small fever or if we are having mild pains we end up going to medical shops and take those painkillers or antacid tablets or use antibiotics on our own the most problematic thing with this things is the antibiotic use which can lead to development of resistant organisms which can lead to more severe infections and requiring ultimately injectable treatments and sometimes we will land up in a condition where no medications will work and if we are using indiscriminately painkillers it will lead to kidney damage it can also lead to other effects in the body and in the same way antacid use if we are using daily or indiscriminately it will lead to it can lead to interstitial nephritis it can lead to vitamin b12 deficiency or magnesium deficiency or it can lead to less iron absorption leading to anemia so the first and the foremost thing to prevent interstitial nephritis is to avoid indiscriminate use of the medications over the counter medications use the drugs prescribed by doctors and use them only for those period prescribed by the doctor like for 5 days or 10 days or 2 days or 3 days don't overuse them a second and the most important thing is to look for any symptoms whenever you develop any new symptoms after starting any drug is uh, it is important to report to the doctor who has started those drugs about the symptoms because early identification as i have already mentioned acute interstitial nephritis if it is identified early the kidney function recovers fully and if you develop any symptoms like decreased urine output 
or swelling of the feet or weakness or new onset fever or rash go to the doctor immediately and inform him and get the testing done like urine test or ultrasound or complete uh, blood picture and serum creatinine value to identify if the kidneys are affected with this medications which you are using or because of the infection which you have developed. So, these are the preventive steps for interstitial nephritis.